How are you doing, Vikings? Are you great? How do yes. You? Cool, awesome. So my name is Marta. I'm from Poland, from Warsaw. And today I will compare various technologies on mobile. I compare native apps, hybrid apps, and progressive web apps. And today I am Vikings, but in my regular life, I'm Angular developer, probably as you. <laughs> and last week I completed my master thesis. And in my thesis, I compared progressive web apps and hybrid apps. And today I want to show you what I found interesting in this, pro in this project. And I want to invite you to my expedition, because today, in this expedition, we try to find perfect solution for your application on mobile. So in this expedition, we need to fight with barbarians. <laughs> Who are barbarians? Barbarians are our issue that we need to solve before we find perfect solutions. So as your regular life, yeah, as a developer. And if we find solution, then we fight, we win a fight. So before we start this expedition, we need a weapon. So today, the weapon is our skill sets, what you already have, and you can use to implement your application. So my Vikings, can you tell me how many of you have ever developed at least five native apps? It could be Android, iOS. Cool. At least five hybrid apps. <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is good row. And uh, at least five regular web apps. Yes, so that's a good answer because I'm prepared for only this option. <laughs> <laughs> and today I will be focused on web apps, but not only. So let's get started. We have our weapon, we can fight. Our first case, native apps. So this case, I think this is the most popular because of um, performance, because our, these apps are fast, are reliable, and we use one specific programming language to implement application on a specific platform, this is on iOS and Android. We have the best access to the operating system. We can use any native features we want. And these apps are great um, because we have real native elements. But not this way. <laughs> but if we think for a while that we need two native apps, application for two platforms, then we need to use two technologies. So we need to have two more skill sets, and you have already two more issues. We don't like it because it means that our developer team must be larger, we need more time to implement this application, and it means that we need more cost for this app. We don't like it, of course. So how to deal with it? I have an idea. So what if we use one code base? To do this, um, we need unified programming language. So I think I have solution. JavaScript, yeah, this is solution. So let's talk how we can use JavaScript to implement hybrid apps, because this is our second case. So in hybrid apps, we compare native apps and web apps. So we have application and we use basic web standard to do this. So we have um, HTML code, CSS, and JavaScript. And today I will focus on hybrid apps that use WebView. So WebView is a container, so the code of our application is wrapped into this container. And what's important is that in hybrid apps you can use native features like camera geolocation, but we don't have a direct interaction between this operating system layer and between the layer of this app. So we need additional layer. This is a bridge, a JavaScript library that allows it to use these um, features. So we can apply native um, plugins and use these features. But there is another important aspect when you use this layer, because these apps are not as fast as native apps. So this is a really important issue. And last case, not this way. <laughs> progressive web apps. So progressive web apps also compared native apps and web apps. So we use basic web standard to develop this application. And from my perspective, progressive web apps evaluated from regular web apps because people started using web apps on their mobiles. And then appeared issues. If you focus for a while what the most frustrates you when you start using your web application on mobile, this is first of all a really slow, because it's loading JavaScript in a browser. And second issue that only works when you have great network when you are online, and it's not really slow. So progressive apps resolve these issues because it can work even in offline state and under unstable network conditions. And these applications also are faster. So this is my favorite explanation because progressive apps are not new case of 
apps. This is still web app, but it's enhanced to get native look and feel. So it's really awesome because we still use basic web standards and we serve this application on a remote server. And you have an access to this app from a browser that is installed on your device. And you use URL just to get this application, but you can see this app in a full view screen. And you can also apply native features like camera, geolocation, push notification, this application. But what is really important that you need to use more than web browsers because not every feature is supported by the browsers. <laughs> Today I told you that progressive apps and hybrid apps compared native apps and web apps. So what's the difference between the solutions? So the first um, difference, I think, is the most important distribution. So progressive apps are still web apps, so you serve on a remote server, and now you have also access from Google Play Store. For hybrid apps, it's similar to the native apps, so you need to install it, and this is distributed by Play Store. If we focus on building process, for PWA, you have the only one build, and it works regardless of the platform. But for hybrid apps, if you want to apply for different platforms, you require each build for this platform. If you want to apply um, native features for PWA, you need to use modern web APIs. But for hybrid apps, you need to apply native plugins. So for these plugins, you should to check that this plugin is supported on this platform. But for PWA, you need to check that this feature is supported by your browser and on your platform. So now let's compare it. So I divide this comparison based on three aspects. This is developer perspective, user perspective, and access to native features. So developer perspective. So the most important feature is just being cross-platform, working cross-platform. So for hybrid apps and progressive web apps, this is really cool. For native, it's not too good. So the development time is and cost is worst in native apps. If we analyze the building process, so for PWA, you have the only one build for the whole apps. For hybrid apps, it depends on the platform, and this is the same for native apps. But if you want to change something in your application as a developer, for PWA, you need to change it once in your code because you have one code base, then build it once and deploy it on a remote server. For hybrid apps, you need to change it once because you have the only one code base, then build it for specific platforms, and then install it on these devices. For native apps, if you have two platforms, you need to change in these codes, in for, for example, for Android and iOS code. After that, rebuild it, and then install it once again. So if you analyze user perspective, so these solutions are better than regular web apps on your mobile. So you can use it to and work it offline state, you have a full screen view. But PWA has an additional um, pro. This is just being searchable by search engines. So this is really cool. And you don't need installation process. So it's great because data shows that with every step of installation, your application loads over 20% of your users. But native apps will be always better because of native look and because of performance. Now let's focus on native features. So the best solution are um, native apps, of course, because you have direct um, access to the operating system. For hybrid apps, you need to focus which plugin you want to use and which this is a platform, for what platform. And for progressive apps, you need to focus which browser will be used by your users. And I try to find features that are not supported by progressive web apps and by hybrid apps. And you can see the results in this table. So if you want to use contacts, calendar, text messages, geofencing, swap navigation, you can't use PWA. If we're talking about sensors, for hybrid apps, it depends on the kind of sensor and on the platform you want to use. And if you want to apply system data and alarms, the only one solution for you are native apps. So there are the key points to app selection. So if you want to get a uh, fast application that is stable, if you want to apply enhanced graphics, APIs, and if you have, of course, na sufficient budget and time, the best solution for you are native apps. 
If budget and time are crucial for you, then focus on hybrid apps because you can easily prototype something and you can use the early one code base and create cross-platform app. PWA, if your application is not too complex, if you don't need to these features I presented you in the table, and also if you don't need installation flow, then PWA will be great for you. So this is a summary. This is the most important slides of this presentation, so take a photo now. <laughs> <laughs> and what I came to say at the end, so that there's no one perfect solution because just technology, but what you should focus on is this one, your weapon, what you already have and what you can use to implement your application with lost cost and lost time. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much. If you want to get these slides. Hey.